let's talk about the stages of shock. So before we actually go into all that, your body has these, uh, these defensive mechanisms. Every sign and symptom that you see in any condition, I don't care what it is, it's your body activating mechanisms to try to compensate for the fact that something's happening. For instance, an example of this that has nothing to do with shock is um, you have an infection. Why do you have a fever? That's your body trying to eradicate the microorganism by increasing its temperature. Why is the area where you have an infection hot and edematous? Because your body is transporting lymph um, and white blood cells and a lot of red blood cells. That's why it's hot. And that's why you can't flex the finger if you, if you injure it. All I'm trying to get at is all signs and symptoms of I don't care what condition, it's your body's attempt to fix the issue. So in this case, we have the four stages of shock. The initial stage right here talks about there's no clinical changes. I mean, your body is undergoing some type of assault. Your body's losing fluids. You're going to hypovolemic shock. Whatever the case is, you're going to shock. But in the initial phase, there's no systemic symptoms because your body can still perfuse organs adequately, meaning your brain can't, your body can't register that you're experiencing this shock yet. After a couple of hours or a couple of minutes, it just depends on what's causing it. You transition to that second one, the compensatory phase or the non-progressive compensatory means your body is compensating. It's trying to do something. And because you're not perfusing um, your tissues well, your body releases a gang of epinephrine, your catecholamines, your adrenaline. That causes peripheral vasoconstriction. All the blood vessels out here, they constrict and they focus the blood in the vital organs. And this is why people that have shock, they experience cold and clammy skin, they develop tachycardia because now your heart is pumping faster to be able to compensate for the lack of fluids that you have. So it's trying to pump the blood a lot faster so it can perfuse the tissues. So that is your compensatory or your non-progressive phase. Your body attempts to maintain hemodynamic status and stability. Your heart rate will go up. Your respiratory rate will go up. Your hands are cold and clammy. One of the may, You may start developing diaphoresis all over your body. But one of the main features of the compensatory phase is that it's compensating, meaning it's still providing perfusion to the organs and tissues. Your level of consciousness is still intact. Your, your blood pressure is still relatively normal. But if you continue to lose blood, let's just say the hypovolemic shock is the example that I'm going to be using for all of these. Um, you're still experiencing the issues that's causing shock. Well, there comes a point where doesn't matter how much your blood vessels perfuse, I mean, constrict on the extremities and how fast your heart is beating, you're losing too much blood. You're not going to perfuse the organs. At that point, you go into what we call the progressive phase. The mechanism in the compensatory stage begins to lose their ability to maintain hemodynamic status. At this point, your blood pressure will drop into a, pro in, into a level that's no longer conducive for hemodynamic status. What I mean by that is you're not perfusing the tissues. This is when the patient's heart's having a severe level of consciousness change. They they're no longer responsive or they have a dramatic change and they become hypotensive. Usually less, the systolic is less than 100. That's the progressive stage. If nothing is done, then we go into what we call the refractory period. And the refractory period is the point of no return. Um, it's an irreversible damage to organs have occurred because you've not perfuse them well, and the systems begin to shut down. And how do we know that? Well, there's something called the GFR, the glomerular filtration rate. It's about 100 mLs per minute. Well, that drops below its respective volume. Um, your urine output, it's supposed to be at least 30 mLs per hour. It drops below that. That's how we know now this patient is developing the refract they're, they're, they're going into the refractory period because all of the times that the body was uh, um, creating to maintain hemodynamic status they're gone and so those are the four phases of um of shock and let's talk a little bit more about shock 